Lord, just amen. 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 The Bible says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. So in the splendor of his holiness, we come to give him thanks today and praise and glorify his name. We welcome you in. So glad that you're here to be a part of worship this morning. Appreciate Diana and Dallas and JT and our praise team and choir and our folks upstairs and Brother Phil and all those who help us each and every week. Thank you for what you do and for the way God uses you as servants before him. That's what we're going to talk about this morning is who we are before the Lord as the Apostle Paul speaks to us from his letter to the Romans. So I hope you have your Bible today and we're going to be looking at the 12th chapter once again of the book of Romans in the New Testament. We're going to begin in verse number th- four, uh, 3 and we're going to be reading verses 3 through 5 together uh, in our scripture reading this morning. You can find it uh, on the sermon notes inside your worship bulletin or you can see it up on the screens behind me and then we'll have the opportunity just to experience God's presence in his word today and what a joy and blessing that is for us every single time. God gives us special gifts when we come to know him as our Savior. He gives us these gifts in order for us to serve him within his body, the church. And so as he blesses us with these special gifts, and uh, Paul is going to talk about those that we're going to read in just a moment, these special gifts are full of his grace just as our salvation is full of his grace. In Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, it reminds us it's by grace we are saved through faith. So it's in God's loving kindness, his uh, wondrous ability to pour himself out on us and say, no matter what we've ever done, he loves us and he gives us his divine favor, his undeserved uh, favor and love. But yet, even though we receive a gift we do not deserve and can never pay for, then he gives us something on top of that. He gives us grace gifts. The New Testament calls them the charismata, the the gifts of God's grace that he pours out on his people. Every single one with his or her own special gift from the Lord. So my gift's going to be different from yours and yours from mine because God's made us what? All one body together and each one of us need to function doing our gift. And so you may sit back and say, Pastor, I don't know what my gift is. Hold on. You can find out what your gift is. You can trust God to show you what that gift is. You may be the the greatest cook or chef on the planet. Well, you know what? We need you here. Always. You may be the, the, the greatest uh, fixer. You can go in and, and fix things in your home. And it's just amazing how this mechanical ability that you have and, and ability to do We need you. Why? Because we need each other. Everybody is a part of the family of God who've made a decision to follow Christ as Savior. And we all have gifts. And we need to put those gifts into practice serving God together. So we're going to read from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse number 3, and you'll see it as you see up on the screens, and we have this opportunity to uh, come before the Lord, say his word together, and experience him in his fullness today. So if you're able this morning, let's stand together and let's read these few verses that you see up on the screen before you today. Romans 12, beginning with verse number 3, let's say it. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the praises that we could lift before your name. Thank you for the joy of our salvation. Thank you that this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll ascribe to you the glory due your name and we'll worship you in the splendor of your holiness. So right now as we come into your presence 
as you speak to each one of us, Lord, please help us open our hearts, our minds to really hear you, to truly experience you, to let you, through your spirit, change us. Thank you for what you've already done and what you will do today. We pray all this in the perfect and precious name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As the scriptures already pointed out, and I've already mentioned, we're all part of one body. Think about your human body for a moment. All of the elements inside your human body, on the inside and the outside, are made up of all kinds of systems that only our Creator God could have put together. And He puts these systems together so that we might function. And He gives us that main organ, a heart, to pump all the blood and keep all the systems going the way they need to go. That's that, uh, the, the central strength of our life. And you know, all, just like our bodies, our physical bodies, need all the systems to work together in order to function correctly, so does God's church. You go, to, you go to your medical professionals and your medical doctors to do what? To keep yourself healthy enough so that you can function well. You know what? God's church is our opportunity to come together in faith, believing in, in such a way that God can use us as one body, all different parts, all different gifts, and use this one body to make an impact upon his world so that others might come to know him as well. That's why in the New Testament you see these thousands of people come together at one time in the, the Feast of the Pentecost and they hear God's word and they not only take God's word back to all the places where they came from, but that group in Jerusalem came together. And the Bible says in Acts 2 that they went from house to house, place to place, uh, worshiping together, praying together, seeking God together, having fellowship together. That's the church. That's what God's called us to do. Now, you can say, well, you know, there's some people in that church I don't like. Tough. <laughs> Tough. You belong to me, and I belong to you. And that's the same for everybody in this body of believers. We all belong to each other. And as we belong to each other, we need to be serving and working and operating together in the goodness of God's grace. Remember, he's poured out his grace, first of all, that we might come to know him in salvation, for by grace we are saved through our faith. But even that faith comes from God. We don't, we don't glean that faith on our own. God gives us the gift of faith that we might believe and we might trust. And so as he gives us that, then he pours himself out into us in his grace that we might uh, learn and we might grow and we might look and say, just as Paul says in the, uh, the very first verse that we read, we don't lift ourselves up or esteem ourselves higher than anybody else because we're all a part of the body. And we're all a part, of, an equal part of the body. My role in the body is no more important than yours. You can fight, you make the body healthy by participating and serving and, uh, and worshiping and loving and fellowshipping and caring. So Paul points these things out to us, and we're going to see them a little bit more in detail. The Lord uh, blesses his people with grace. And first of all, we know we're one body in Christ. One body. He gives each member a special gift to bless his church. So I don't know what your gift is, but sitting around on the sidelines saying, well, I don't know how to serve because I don't know what my gift is, is silliness. Because God has given you an ability to do something well, and you've done that well. And you might say, well, I don't know what my special gift is. Don't worry about that. Just serve. God's given you a special gift that you will come to know as you serve, as you experience him, as you know you've been set free to serve by 
the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's given you the ability to connect with other people in the body, to bless others in the body, to recognize we all belong to each other. And no matter what our differences are, that's what we ought to celebrate. Because because we're different, God takes us and knits us together as one and uses us in his kingdom. Paul points out, for I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So as we are all a part of this one body, we look upon each other as equal parts of the body. We each one, we don't esteem ourselves as more important than the other. All of us are the same in the eyes of the Lord. In Philippians 2 verse 3, the very same admonition or teaching to the Philippians is there from Paul. Esteem others better than yourself. So we want to lift people up. We want to build one another up. We want to trust God that as we are one body, we're put together to serve in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 for as the body is one and has many members but all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ we are in Christ Christ is in us we serve together in the body of Christ and we belong to each other so we're all one body in Christ you are mine and I'm in you I'm as you I am yours and as we are one in Christ as a church, that means relationships, doesn't it? And sometimes relationships get messy. We get messy. It gets messy because there are misunderstandings. There, there are things that happen that, that we don't understand. We perceive things from other people. We have feelings. And sometimes our feelings get hurt. But please do not allow the excuse that your feelings got hurt to drive you away from what you know God has already given you and he's called you to do. He has given you what? Salvation through his grace, through your, the faith that he has bolstered you with. And then he's poured out and given you a spiritual gift. So don't use this silly excuse, somebody hurt my feelings at that church, and walk away. Because what you do is you're a part of the health of the church, and you can also be a part of the disunity or the unhealthy church. And it's unhealthy to, to walk away. Every time I got mad with my little brother growing up, I didn't walk away and say, I don't know you. I wanted to, right? But I didn't walk away and say, I don't know you anymore. No, he's a part of my family. He's always going to be a part of my family. So is your church. Your church family is your family. And so as the church family is your family and we are one body in Christ, then we function together. It's messy, folks, but it's biblical. So we learn to love each other. How many times do we read in the New Testament, it tells us to look past the faults of our brothers and sisters. And then you know when you do that, there's also the reciprocal event. They look past yours. Oh, I, how could I have any faults? How, how could I have any things that somebody would be disappointed with? Everybody does. So we accept that and we accept one another just as we accept Jesus as our Savior and our Lord being filled with his grace. So he gives us his grace and we share with one another. We are one body in Christ. We're like Lego blocks. Y'all ever play with those? I still got a bucket of them at home. Legos. And you take them and you build stuff. I, love, I used to love just sit there and build things. And all kinds of blocks. Everything that fits. And I was in my mind always trying to say, how can I fit these blocks to form what I want it to make? And I want you to think about yourself as one of those blocks. And how God... You don't, you don't decide what form it's going to take. God does. And he takes us as individual blocks, with, and he, he builds with us his church. Not a physical building, but the spiritual church that makes a difference in the world. 
And so every single person in this room and every single person that's a part of our family of faith here at Sandy Valley has an opportunity, an opportunity to, to be a part of the building of Christ. And he uses us, if we'll let him, to make a positive, powerful impact on the world. Now, we'll also be used as a negative, disunifying body if we allow ourselves to. If we allow ourselves to bicker like the rest of the world. If we allow ourselves to, to be unhealthy with one another instead of reconciling differences. Instead of going to that person that may have hurt your feelings and, and, and just being honest with them and sharing with them. You know, you've heard me say it a lot of times in the last year and a half. I've never heard of church issues with relationships just somehow going away. They don't go away. They have to be addressed. You have to talk to one another, share with one another. Have you ever known folks that didn't speak to one another because they got angry? I've seen it in the church. I've seen people pass each other in the hallways and say nothing because they're angry with one another. That's ridiculous. You hear it? That's ridiculous. We're the church of Jesus Christ filled with God's grace and all of us have been given a special gift and we take those gifts and we love each other with them. We don't hold grudges and walk around and not speak to one another. We love each other through it all. We are one body in Christ. Secondly, as God has blessed us, his people, with grace, we're given those differing gifts. In verses 4 and following, here in this passage, what does it tell us? For we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Now understand that. Not everybody's going to do the same thing. We're all going to be in Christ. We're all going to care about each other. We're all going to love past our differences. But we have different functions in the body. So we embrace that. So we being many, verse 5, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. We belong to one another, but we have differing functions and abilities in the body. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. I like that, that phrase. Let us use them. Let's put them into practice, in other words. Let's be those people that whatever gift God has given us, let's put it to good use. If prophecy, the Bible says, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. What is he talking about? Using the faith and the grace that God's poured out on us. He who exhorts in exhortation. Now that is exhort and not snort. I've seen a lot of Southern Baptist Christians snort at each other, but not as many exhort each other. You know what exhortation means? It means to strongly encourage someone to do something. Strongly encourage. We want to be strong encouragement to one another. We don't want to snort at each other. We want to be those people who truly care about each other. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So all of these things, service and teaching and exhortation and giving and leading and mercy and prophecy, which that's, prophecy is simply speaking on God's behalf. You are, you're saying the word of God. So as you speak the word of God and not your own opinion, not your own word, God uses that. In Ephesians 4 Verse 11, the Bible says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying, again, means building up. So we're called, my role is to build you up in the word of God. Pastor Phil's role, build you up in the word of God. Our, our church staff role is to teach and to build people up in the word of God so that's our role and that's our function and God gives us all relative ways to teach preach care and love each other and so all of these functions are important and a part of who we are at all times in 2nd Corinthians 9 verse 11 
This is a real admonition that we use our gifts properly. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves who? A cheerful giver. So we give, and this is not just talking about our financial means, which is a, a, a part and portion of who we are. We ought to be good stewards of our finances. We ought to be giving our tithes into the storehouse, exactly as the Word of God tells us. But this is talking about giving our lives, giving ourselves in service, giving ourselves to uh, care for each other in the body of Christ. Every one of us has a function, and we embrace that function that God has given us and we love each other in the function. It's all about building up the body. We don't get caught up in identifying or labeling our gifts. Don't get worried about that. Don't sit there with all the spiritual gift chart and, and try to figure. I've seen people do this my whole life. They get their spiritual gift chart out. Well, where am I? Am I uh, under administration or am I under that? I just want to say, forget all that. What has God given you as a passion in your heart to do in his name? And let him speak to your spirit and your mind and go to work. Don't be sitting around trying to identify what you got on a chart. Care about people. Love people abundantly. Be a cheerful giver in everything you do. Take the talents and gifts that God's poured into your life and function in them in God's church. Be that church using all the differing gifts that he's given us and love each part of the body. I want you to know, and I've already said it, you're needed. You're needed as we teach children and the next generations in our uh, student ministry. You're needed as we care about people in the congregation you're needed as we seek to uh, to help teach each other and disciple one another in the body of Christ whether it's teaching or leading or leading a disciple life group that we started last year all these different opportunities are there for us to plug in and serve and care but not sit on the sidelines and say that's somebody else's job we're those people that if we hear this plainly, we recognize for us to be a healthy church means all of us has a ministry in the church. Amen? Amen. If we're to be healthy, all of us in the body demonstrate and use our gifts to, be, to make a healthy church and to allow God's spirit to work through us. Let me say one thing that I want everybody to hear. God brings who he desires into his body, whether it's Sandy Valley or any church around us in his world. And none of us in this body have the responsibility to determine who should be in the body or who shouldn't be in the body. So, let me as with exhortation, as strongly in, in encouragement as I can give you, don't ever take it upon yourself to tell somebody else they should or should not be here. That's the Spirit's job. You pray for them. You do encourage them. You love on them. You care for them. But don't you ever tell somebody, oh, they shouldn't be in this body. God has put us all together for an amazing purpose. And that's to share his love with people in this entire community around us. And we have people, praise God, from all kinds of communities in our uh, neighboring area. All kinds of different zip codes, and they're all coming to Sandy Valley. Praise the Lord. Let's be those people that reach beyond ourselves into the communities in which we're in and recognize we put our differing gifts to work in his name. And we let him inspire us and help us to follow him and help others follow him. Last thing, God who's poured out all of this grace and all of this strength and all of this love upon us, thirdly, we're to use our gifts to serve. I've been talking about that the entire message, but here, let's just focus on it for a moment. We use our faith in ministering our gifts. Here, Paul says you do it in proportion to what you've been given and that God has, has dealt to each one a measure of, of faith. 
Now that measure of faith is proportioned to each one of us to give what he's given. He's not asking you to give more than what you've been given. He's just asking you to give of what you have been blessed by him. So we give of ourselves and we serve. We recognize something. Serving is a part of our DNA as the church. It's a part of who we're called to be. We put our gifts into action and we don't sit back and act as if we're ignorant of our gifts. We recognize God speaks to our heart and our mind and we let him lead, it, lead us to serve him. We let him speak to us because we've been, again, set free in salvation to serve so all of us filled with grace and filled with those gifts of grace we put those gifts to work Jesus said it in Mark 10 43 through 45 yet it shall not be among you as he was speaking to his disciples but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So serving is the main reason we come together. We praise God, we give him glory, but we give him glory by serving him and by serving together in his body of Christ. In Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25, these are verses that every Christian believer needs to underline in their Bible. And let us consider one another in order. To do what? Stir up love. We want to consider each other and stay with each other in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. But being faithful. Faithful and committed. First to God and serving Him. And secondly to each other. You owe your life and your salvation to God. Amen? You owe... All of that to what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross for you as he died for your sin. As he rose on the third day and conquered death to give you victory over death forever. So you owe Christ Jesus your whole existence and your life. And guess what? You owe each other your allegiance, your care, and that you will be faithful to each other in God's church. I grew up back in a time where some of the early uh, television shows were on TV and uh, some of them were, they still run some of them in black and white on television today. But there was a story that first of all came out in, a, in books about the Lone Ranger, okay? They first came out in books and then young people that have no idea who I'm talking about there was this box that was in the living room called the radio. And people sat around, because they didn't have a television. So they sat around the radio and they listened to stories about the Lone Ranger on the radio. And then finally one day, the Lone Ranger made it to television. And I still remember as a boy watching those black and white episodes of the Lone Ranger. Now people use the term Lone Ranger all the time. They talk about somebody who's just out on their own and doing their own thing and not associated with anybody else. They, they say they're living like the Lone Ranger. They're out there by themselves. But let me submit something to you. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto, his trusted companion. Even the, Lone, even the Lone Ranger out in the middle of the West fighting for justice had his friend Tonto by his side. Do you know, we laugh, and it is silly. But what's not silly is this. God's given us each other. You know, just look around you right now. God's given you each other. And as he's given us one another to serve, he gives us his son. Greatest gift ever, right? The son of God came and died for me. The greatest gift of all time. And then he pours his gifts out and gives us each other. And we don't need to do anything but just as we looked at the Lord 
and said, thank you, Father, for sending Jesus, and thank you, Jesus, for saving me. We need to thank God, too, that he gave us each other, that he gave us our families and each other in the wider, broader family of the church. He's given us one another, and we need to embrace God's provision as we embrace one another. One of the things I love about Sandy Valley Church is every single time we come together, I see people hug each other and love on each other and care about each other. Amen. Let's do it for everybody. Let's care for everybody in that same way. Let's recognize God's given us all differing and wonderful gifts and he wants us to put those into practice and service together. What about it? Do you know there are needs in this body that you can be a part of helping and serving and meeting? Ask God. God's going to reveal to you and show you those needs that can, you can be a part of. Who is it in this body of Christ that you need to reach out to? That you need to make amends with? That you need to fix things with? Because And understand, you won't be able to do it, but God's Spirit will. God's Holy Spirit will fix those things in your life if you allow Him to. Listen to Him today. Trust him today. Come to him today. You're not the lone ranger in the world. God's put us all together as his people. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you in this moment. You've put us here at this time in this place. Not by accident, not by mistake, not by happenstance, but in your providential will. So, Lord, as we come today, we ask for strength to understand your word for us. That we might respond in faith to what you would have us to do. You're calling all of us to serve. And so I pray that as there are those here today that you may be speaking to specifically to serve in a special way. That, Lord, you would just... As you speak to them, they would say, yes, Father, I want to follow. Lord, we know that you speak to all of us about where we need to be in service. I know you're speaking to some about being a part of this church family and joining this church and serving here as a born-again believer in Christ. I, I pray that you would guide them as they're trying to understand your will for their life. And I pray, Father, the most important thing that anybody in this room today that's never made a sincere step toward you and said I want your grace Lord I want to know Jesus as my personal Savior my Lord I want to follow you and be sure I'm going to be with you in heaven one day when I die and leave this world I pray Father that you'll give them that courage and that boldness to reach out to you right now and just say Lord would you please forgive me of my sins would you please come into my life and save me would you please Lord help me believe and know that I'm going to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I'm going to believe Father that you raised him from the dead on the third day after he went to the cross and died for me Oh, Father, I pray that you would just help that one hear your voice and say yes to you this morning. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for building us up as a body of Christ. And thank you for the love that's in this place. And I pray you would multiply it into our communities and into our world. We give you praise for that thankfulness for all, all that you've done. And as you speak to us right now, let us step out in faith and serve you. And we pray this believing in Jesus' name. Amen.